Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Tiny Leaders podcast. We're here to shout out some tiny leaders in our community and help everyone grow at the same time. Uh, my name is Bill. With me is Keith right here. And then we have our guest from TikTok. It's Professor Plum. How's it going, man? How's it going? Uh, my name is Professor, I'm Professor Plum. Uh, you can find me at, at plum.exe. That's P L U M B E dot exe. And uh, I am a Magic the Gathering content creator, primarily on TikTok. Uh, I've been doing this for about a couple of years. I've been playing Magic the Gathering since 2014 now, I believe, which mm. makes me feel a little bit old. But there you go. Welcome in, man. You've been playing a little longer than me. I've only been playing since about Ixalan. So I know Keith's been playing since he was like... I'm immemorial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Keith, Keith's definitely got time on both of us probably combined. Um, <laughs> I started playing in 96. Uh, wow. Part of learning to read for me, actually. Jeez. Wow. I love it. So real quick, I got Kadir pulled up because it was the random commander of the day. She's the first card up. That way I don't have some random thing up there, but that's why she's up there. Also, she's a really cool commander. If you ever want to try it. Out. I've I've seen what she can do a couple of times now. Uh, the last time you and I went to D20, she was pretty scary <laughs> hundreds of hundreds of little monty python rabbits all over the yeah. place so yeah that's the one that creates a token uh a rabbit token right rabbit token for each yeah. token you control so every time she connects she doubles your Kadir. tokens <laughs> yeah Kadira called the small yeah i uh, sorry to ramble but i actually played this in um uh limited oh did you uh, play yeah uh she was uh, she was a bomb. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. She's just so just putting her out, and then next turn, just making, like, just a, just a load of tokens was just amazing. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. With, with all the little value tokens we've got flying around now, like treasures and clues, and it adds up real fast. Mm. All right. So, uh, so the, the topic today is actually going to be really interesting, I feel. Um, we kind of wanted to talk about like magic across the world because a lot of us Americans don't really get a view outside the world. I went to Japan, but I didn't get to play magic while I was there, which was a bummer. But <laughs> our perspective is very much limited to our locals here. Yeah, our like meta, even, right? right. Even across like the country, you're going to see so many different shapes of the game. Right. Definitely. And uh, so, yeah, I think we wanted to kind of touch on that. But before we do, uh, let's get a little uh, look into uh, Plum a little bit. So uh, how's your how's your current MTG life going? And you got any other hobbies you are into? Besides uh, magic? So, yeah, I like I play the other Wizards of the Coast game. I play uh, Dungeons and Dragons okay. been that for, uh, since like 2017, I believe. Nice. Um yeah, I also I also like uh, it's kind of a sub hobby of magic, but like yeah, you know, like all the foils, like all the junk foils that people leave behind oh, in yeah. like game stores. Then. My favorites. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually like I. People may hate me for this, but I actually take those foils and make little foil tokens out of them, like That's awesome. all the unplayable foils. So like I make like references to like um cardboard crack mtg goldfish uh right. just like ra random like sort of memes uh but <laughs> make them in make them into a token so my recent one is uh, uh i did a a cardboard crack one uh where like the guy is saying aggro wins games bro and it's a <laughs> gold and, and, and he's dressed up as a goblin um I so it's a little it. one one goblin I, I feel attacked um, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so so I get into Magic Across the Pond then. Uh, so Magic Across the Pond for me, uh, I am currently in a Pioneer League that happens every Monday at uh, my local game store. It's called Cataclysm Games uh, UK. Uh, they're based in uh, they're based in Kent, which is very uh, sort of near to London, and. Sure. Um, 
yeah, so it's lasting for eight weeks, and we're currently on our fifth week. So we've just had our fifth week, sorry. So we've got three more weeks left, and it's a, it as the name tells, it's a Pioneer League. You bring uh, whatever Pioneer deck you want, and you can change decks de uh, depending on the week you prefer, or you can just run with the same deck throughout the whole eight weeks. That's pretty awesome. It sounds uh, like a really good time, yeah. Mm. It kind of just acts as a F&M, uh, but it's just on Mondays. Yeah. But yeah. Keith, you're a little sure. more pioneer centered than I am. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of pioneer decks that I really love. Yeah. Um, is that is that a really big scene out there, or um, uh, here at our locals, it's still pretty small, but the people that like it love it. Yeah. So it, it all boils down to like how much money you have. So uh, there's yeah. a lot of like old. There's a lot of like standard players that have realized that rotations not feasible for them financially. Right. So they, so they've moved over to Pioneer because it's like their standard. Some of their standard decks are quite good in, in Pioneer. So like the um, yeah. currently in standard meta, the one that's soaring to the top right now is uh, the Attraxa Reanimator. Uh, yes. That that transitions quite nicely over to Neo form Attraxa. If you've heard of those cards, sure. uh, it basically has the same shell, same sort of color scheme, but just instead of reanimating it, you Neo form into. A, on turn three and uh, make me cry so <laughs> yeah so we've and realized we, probably we've realized... not a huge buy-in right like neoform's not super expensive i don't imagine neoform isn't attracts it is because right. he's still in standard and again so he's pioneer play right um but in terms of buy-in like if you have a standard deck you can just show up to pioneer and probably get a couple of wins usually with our leagues we do four rounds of swiss best of three and um it's like i've taken like old standard pre-cons and gone two and two with some of them so like the old Civic yeah. flash pre-con from water spark season of standard sorry throne of eldraine season of standards that i just took that added a few cards to it um just to make it pioneer updated so replacing quench with make disappear and sure. uh just running with it and w going like two and two like uh last night i went three and one with it so it wasn't too bad that's great that sounds like a fun time so keith would you say that you've seen any of these kind of decks running around in our meta in particular or is ours pretty like different um our area um for context we live in the dayton ohio area um the biggest locals we have is Epic Loot in Centerville, and they do pretty large pioneer events. Uh, for the most part, they're very meta chasey in our area. So we don't see a lot of like fun conversions like that. So kind of um, whatever's I'm, hot at the time is. Yeah, top it's tiers. a lot of Naya like beat down decks right now and like very, very strong tempo decks. Um, Basically, if you pull up MTG Goldfish and look at their top eight, you're going to see like three or four of those. Um, we do have a couple of dedicated players who really love their thing. Um, I play mostly Risen Reef um, and Master of Waves in a really funny Simic Tempo deck. And it's my baby that I'll never abandon. Um, a couple of the other players in our area are like really dedicated to Esper and uh Zorius spirits which were really strong a while ago they've fallen off since but they still play them they still get wins so um we're pretty spiky but you'll still find some fun here and there okay so going off of that um yeah there is still like there is still like the meta uh with entity goals some people just literally buy into a meta deck so yeah. we do have um we do have one player uh, that has bought into Absan Greek Fang, which if you look at the meta game right now it is oh, uh, yeah. nine nine point six of percent of the meta. Ooh, uh, yeah. If you travel around my local area, you will see uh, we had a last we had a um, Phyrexia or will be one uh, Pioneer Store Championship at uh, Graves End, which is also in Kent, and um, most of that uh, meta was Rakdos Midrange literally yeah uh about 10 decks would rack those mid-range or some sort of <laughs> thing you of like that. alitas yeah. yeah hope you like children uh there was this one player that was playing mono black mid-range and won the event because people <laughs> it was an off deck and people didn't know what to do with it my favorite 
Oh, I love I love that. Like in all games where you bring a, a total meta killer to the game and all of a sudden it's the top deck at the store. It's super fun. We also have classic archetypes like Kazoya's Control. Uh, unfortunately, we still have a Nickfos Ramp player at our <laughs> local game store as well. Yeah, yeah. Devotion. And oh. um, yes, yeah, so going off of the spirits uh, clause that you were talking about, Keith, the yeah. the main spirits players that we have, we have two uh, Coco spirits players, so yeah, Banthor so, spirits. So fun. And that is currently the top achieving deck in our local meta right now. There's two Bant Spirits players at the top, and I've been trying my absolute hardest to try and bring them down. That's really cool, actually. It's neat to see, like, the decks of yesteryear still, oh, totally. like, able to top and really go forward. But with the introduction of battles as well, the Invasion of the Goblin Khan is essentially, in some cases, a strict replacement or, yeah. like, the sixth... Uh, sorry, the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th copy of Selfless Spirit. Yeah. It's it's that strong. Not to mention on the front side, it does, it forces someone. So it just increases yeah. the tempo. It's great. That's pretty wild. The, I haven't gotten to play with battles yet. Um, I pulled a f couple of packs uh, last time I went to locals, but I haven't gotten any yet. So, oh, mm. uh, it's coming soon, though. They look so fun. Yeah, so battles uh, with the Pioneer, battles haven't really impacted the mess game. There is the odd battle every now and again. And so Invasion yeah. of Goblin Khan is like the main one. Yeah. Then um, if you're... What's the other one? Uh, Invasion of Innistrad it has seen some fringe play, mainly in Zombie Tribal, uh, sure. because the backside is zombies <laughs> galore. As you might imagine. And... Um, yeah, so battles have impacted the format. Neoform Atraxa plays the odd battle because it can. And um, but yeah, it's it's shaken up the format a little bit. It hasn't affected the meta game as much, but yeah. So uh, my question for you, Keith, is uh, what deck do you run uh, in Pioneer? So my baby, um, I have a couple of shells. I've got like, is it Phoenix? I've got a pretty solid Rakdos mid-range shell, but my baby that I love to death is a Risen Reef and Master of Waves homebrew kind of beatdown deck. Um, if you're unfamiliar, Risen Reef is a Simic Elemental that basically draws you your whole deck uh, when you play Elementals um, and then slams lands on the field while it's at it. It's fantastic. And Master of Waves is a very fun merfolk that creates elementals equal to your devotion to blue. Um, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Um, the backbone <laughs> of the deck is uh, Shore Crasher Elemental and um, Tempest Gen, which are both like mid-rangey beatdown creatures that are both three blue. Um, and then a big old tempo package with all of the suspects you imagine your counter spells and gross unfun <laughs> blue stuff that sounds amazing so basically like to sum it up in a sound effect your deck is yeah i i sit around <laughs> for two turns countering things and then on turn three i play a shore crasher elemental and everybody has to stop and read it because they've never <laughs> seen this thing before uh, and then turn four i create you know seven elementals and draw seven cards and three of them are lands so they go on the table um, love it by the way did you see master waves actually got a reprint no i did not but that's secret glorious land. more artwork for my boy please i used to play mono blue devotion back in uh the Ball of the gods season the standard yeah that was, that was a lifetime ago oh, that's boy. uh actually where the deck comes from my the time i spent the most amount of time aggregate in magic and especially outside of commander was during cons of tarkir block um and theros was still very legal and i spent most of that time playing abzan monsters and sultai tempo with mono blue devotion being the real name of the deck mm -hmm. uh, and it's been kind of a a passion project ever since yeah, so like I, I was quite heavy involved in standard at that time as well, playing uh, thirty-seven one drops as the deck was called. Yes, and uh, that was the one of the winning Pro Tool decks uh, back in that time. 
Yep. And as the name entails, it played 37 one drops. It was yeah. great. Monsoon Swiss Spear, a Chrome Crusader, all that, that stuff. It yeah. was just nice, absolutely nice. brilliant. And then anyone that played a siege right now, I just immediately scoop. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sorry for what I've done to you. <laughs> yeah. The Menace remains one of my babies to this day. Uh, I've still been trying to figure out how to force its way into Pioneer. Someone tried that last week and had, like, it was four Siege Rhino, three Falio and the Gitrov monster. And it was just, yeah. it was just, That's a, just gross. That, that was the top end. Uh, it was just a value edge from there on out. And plus, like, uh, the banned Golgari elf thing that exiles and creates mana, the one uh, Death Right Shaman. Death yeah. Shaman, because that's legal in Pioneer. Yep. People forget that. But it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds like right up my alley, That's actually. I love it. I'll try and get a deck list off and throw it in the deck for submissions later on. But yeah, uh, moving, back to, moving back to the original question. Um, so the deck I run in Pioneer is Ataka Red. And, as, and the, as the name entails, it's a mono red aggro deck splashing Ataka's command. So it runs four Monstro Swift Spear, four Soul Scar Mage. Four top yeah. red as the top, as the top end, you know, two drops the top end in most magic games, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. Bonk. Dragon. Um, but yeah, the it plays the Burning Tree Emissary Reckless Bushwhacker combo in there as well. Excellent. So th there have been games where I've just opened a hand and it was just four Burning Tree Emissaries and one Reckless Bushwhacker. I was just like, okay, cool. Guess we go to game two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, that is that is the, my most competitive deck, and that's the one I take to store championships or anything yeah. higher than that. I can I get behind it. it. I, I love red deck wins in all its many forms. You so. gotta res you gotta respect the archetype, man. If you don't respect the archetype, you're gonna lose. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Right, so, build, push us push us forward or we're gonna we, talk yeah, about pioneer no, until the end of time. That's fine. We'll totally go forward. Uh so we're we are primarily a uh commander channel. So what uh what EDH deck are you brewing up currently? Uh, prof. <laughs> um, oh, there's a few. So this this commander isn't legal, but okay. um, it's one that I've held dear to my heart. It's and a nephilim. Isn't really, it? It, it is not a nephilim. Okay. It is not. A nephilim. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm not that much of a savage. We would be the same person if you said <laughs> that. <laughs> um, no, this is Utter Jank, Ultra Jank, and it is Grimlock Dinobot Leader. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember we talked about this a little bit. Aller. <laughs> yeah. And, wow. Uh, it's, <laughs> it plays most of the battles that it can because sure. Mark Rosewater has stated that anything that transforms refers to. Uh, Grimlock as a transformer so yeah. all the battles transform so you can have them as transformers so they gain the buff of the plus two plus O. Oh, so dinosaurs vehicles and transformers and other transformers gain plus two plus O. Oh. that's pretty sick and that's it's really cool it, it, it's cool it's not good it just it plays like it will play one spell a turn and hope it's a bomb and that'll be it and it's just <laughs> that's just fine that's the best way to play commander right <laughs> i've been trying to convince people to go back in time to battle cruiser for years yeah. oh, sure <laughs> totally it's very much a battle cruiser commander and I, I love it so much where you can just go like you can convince people to respect the money because grimlock is not a cheap card yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh if we Another so there's another commander I'm bringing around, and that is the new uh, Rona from March of Machine, Rona Herald of Invasion, and she's a slippy floppy too, isn't she? She is, yeah, that is correct. So I think you're seeing a theme with my decks. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Rona Herald of Invasion, and it's uh, Rona Super Friends. Believe it or okay. not. Okay, there we go. So because all the planeswalkers are legendary, you can just like. You can cast a Planeswalker in response to the untapped trigger from Rona, tap her down, loot, and just keep drawing cards and treat, keep drawing, getting value out of oh, totally. just the amount of Planeswalkers you're playing. So I think we yeah. were talking about this in the Discord, and uh, I, 
if I'm reading it correctly, we can deal damage to her in free cast. Uh, correct. Yeah. That's so, pretty sick. Yeah, it, that's not the main game plan. Sure. Of her. Um, I decided to build around the front face, but if it come, if the situation becomes dire and needs to stop threatening commander damage, I can just. Uh, when the game goes on for that long, when I'm playing playing talkers, I can just transform her. Sure. If I need to. Yeah, I think we were talking That's... about it. That like uh, pestilence would just be hilarious to flip this and then play pestilence and. <laughs> oh cast yeah, it, your runs, hand. It, it runs a few pestilence types effects as hey. well. It's... <laughs> Bill's favorite. That's my dirty vice is pestilence and pyrohemia. It... <laughs> Much to my chagrin, um, indeed, because. Um, it, Grimlock runs Pyrohemia because of all the dinosaurs that and have rage. rage. Yep. Right. <laughs> also a build deck. Uh, he loves <laughs> He loves that thing. Yeah, I built Junt Dinos so I could play Pyrohemia and Pestilence. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, with, with Crush as the her, commander man. too, so. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a blast. Keith, what are you uh, looking into right now? I know you've been a little more into warhammer and whatnot but any commanders exciting you coming up in the future um so i actually just finished my crash build after i got my super cool signed copy um that was the project that i've been sitting on for untold months for no reason uh the next one is finishing up the nephilim box um i have a big old battle box with all five nephilim uh the last one to build is witch maw um, and that's going to be a very long project because I've been spending a pretty unreasonable amount of time on these guys. Right, but, right. Uh, it is a passion project. Like, these are kind of my baby decks that I really, really tailor and I go out of my way to find foils for. And Right, right. Um, that- which mall is really really scary too so it's not the kind of deck that i'm just gonna put on the table Plop all every the time table onto, right yeah um but it's it's near and dear to my heart Love um it. people should play the nephilim uh, let me pull that up it's which mall one word yes uh it's uh hyphenated okay it pulled it up yep there it is which mall oh yeah yeah, let's just play a spell, get huge, and then bonk. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so I I already built a version of the deck, and it was your classic enchantress deck. Sure. Um, it was killing off even like my other Nephilim decks, which are all very highly tuned, very tailored decks on turns like five consistently. Oh. Um, so that got ripped down and now we're starting from scratch and trying to like get it more in line with the like seven across the board that I want. So. Totally. So they can so, all play together too. So yeah, that's the plan. So you play which more Nephilim? Uh, my, one of my other local game stores, they play Ink Treater Nephilim. Oh yeah. Ink Treater was the first one I built. It yeah. was the first one to go in the box. Um, it, it also it's... had to be toned down very heavily. It's so stupid. <laughs> Cause well, like there's, there's, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of sorceries that just like, as well as targeting the creature, allow you to draw a card or like there's, uh, I think there's a green sorcery that allows you to play an additional land, but put, put two plus one plus one counters on something. The... You untap with Ink Trader and you basically draw your whole deck, um, able to put like millions of lands onto the battlefield oh, yeah. and just like on oh, it... and so go, ha, ha, I win. It, it gets much worse than that. Um, yes, the value you can get out of it is astounding. No doubt. Act of Treason is actually Insurrection. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. There just... are so many things. like, And now there are Act of Treasons that give you value on top. Right. So like uh, something blood from Crimson Vow is just Act of Treason plus you get a blood token for every creature on the table. Um... <laughs> There's a uh, slip through space. Now everything's unblockable. And even if you don't, you know, snag your opponent's entire table, 
you just kind of kill them for free. Um, there's no end to the things that accidentally break in full ink treader nephilim so it's another one that i had to like take apart start from scratch down. tone it down a little yeah. bit totally. uh it's more of a heroic tribal deck now love it that is amazing you just you play one spell in the heat trader and then just go heroic 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 exactly <laughs> that's amazing um, now <laughs> it is it is a hard one to point um because most of your cards that you copy don't actually like that's not targeting the spell. So they won't trigger your heroic if you Enki and then target everybody. Right. Instead, you use Enki for your big buffs. And then every once in a while, you use them on your regular creatures for little incidental value here and there to keep up with the rest of the sure, table. Sure. Um, it's an extremely parsed down version of the deck instead of I accidentally went on turn four. Um, yeah, because that that deck was just it popped the hell off in the one game we played with it. So, yeah, so. Um, but something that I've noticed I do a lot and it's it's kind of one of those things that I feel is very easy to do in the current state of commander is accidentally make a nine when you're looking for a seven. Oh, sure. Um, preface every answer. project I talk about with I'm probably working this back down a little bit. Yeah, the, like at my local game store, like we're always debating the power levels of commanders. We we have players that say, "Oh yeah, this this uh, commander decks a nine and then we just start pulling out all of our mana vaults and like just going land, soul right. ring, mana vault, uh, mana crypt, whatever. Right, right. And then <laughs> and then the player that said that has a nine goes tap land go. Right. <laughs> and that's that's a thing too, right? Is like a lot of people when they think of a seven, they're like, Yeah, I can keep up with sevens, but really like pre cons nowadays are almost sevens. Oh I, absolutely. I, usually look there's high debate there's high debate about this. I I like to say that pre cons are like a six. Six, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. They they used to be a five. They used to be a four oh yeah. A, back originally, like a a Lauro a timeline. <laughs> Like, yeah. you know, was... how much I love Marath Will of the Wild and how not good of a deck it is. <laughs> right, totally. <laughs> but yeah, the, there's high debate for it, and we could have this whole podcast developed for that. But oh, right, know. right. <laughs> Episode two. <laughs> Episode two, indeed. <laughs> so to touch on what I'm doing real quick, I am almost done building on my Rel Shield of Argive deck. It it's just about making a bunch of soldiers and crashing into people, so it's not super yeah. powerful. I just want my turn to be my turn and everyone else's turn to be their turn. Beautiful. So, so. Commander's Flail and Grand Abolisher. And, and she does it by herself, too. So, yeah. Yep, gotta love yeah. It. And then in an upcoming project I'm going to work on, I'm going to do a short on it here soon, is the new Obnixilis that got spoiled. Have you seen that, Prof? Uh, yeah, I'm up to date with all of the leaks, but you, we best not. Uh, talk about them otherwise Pinkertons would come after us that's true I heard yeah, about that right, too yeah right. the good old Pinkertons <laughs> um, all I'm gonna um, say is that deck is gonna be insane. wizards but yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like I like what they're doing with the spoilers I'm very frightened to see the fact that all the plane talkers are just getting yeeted and there's not going to be any plane talkers anymore right that's what I'm that's what I'm assuming is going to happen because they're going to replace planeswalkers with battles. That's well, what I think that's going to happen. The only thing is, though, is that we've seen we've already created a new planeswalker in the story with Quintorius. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it just that's that's where it's going. That's where I see it. Like with Spark Rupture, I'm like, mm, what's going on? <laughs> right. It is very insane. We'll just have to find out and wait and see. And there'll be a lot of content made about it. Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. So go back to your uh, your Grimlock deck. We were kind of talking about power level. What kind of power level would you kind of put it at? And like, what's your favorite card to probably go into the deck? Would you say? So yeah, the power level of it is going to be a four because it's it it has barely any interaction. It's just playing a lot of big dumb stuff every turn. Sure. Yeah, and it's just, it goes bonk, and then just hope no one else bonks the creatures. Sure, secret commander Tovalar. 
<laughs> no, 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 the command, <laughs> the commander is Grimlock. I know about leader. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, the, but yeah, Tovalar is in the deck. But my favorite card to put in it is oh, what is that artifact called that turns everything into a changeling? What is it called? Three of oh, uh, Maskwood Nexus. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put, put in, putting that in and slapping that down and then saying, "Oh yeah, this my gear shaft's now a werewolf." Smack! Yes, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love Smack, it. Smack! Draw seven cards. Hopefully, put seven more dinosaur werewolf Zuberas down. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. Yeah, we were talking about uh, Zubera support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it plays some of the uh, trans. It plays some of the transfers from Brothers War as well. But yeah, the. Um, Marswood Nexus is my go-to card. That is yes. awesome. I love this card. Uh, I actually play it in my Runo deck because I do the same thing, but I want to make everything sea serpents or krakens so I can copy I, anything. I, I played want. in like six different decks. Oh, it's such a fun card. And it's not even a yeah. great card. It's just like when you get to pull it off, it's absolutely a blast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A sub game me and my friends play whenever I play Marswood Nexus is see who how many creature types each player can name if they name a creature type that someone else's name they lose oh <laughs> nice <laughs> that's really fun so, so, so you just like, go around in a circle of, yeah so at the start of the turn you go uh this creature is also a coward and then the next person will have to go this creature is also a gamer and <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's actually really incredible fun. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's pretty awesome um prof i'm gonna probably slide one of your tiktoks into the video version of this at some point maybe at the beginning or the end um yeah go for it also uh so i think we can kind of start wrapping up a little bit so if you guys um what is your future plans like are you just doing the tiktok thing for now or are you gonna try and move into youtube anything like that the uh, future plans for now uh will probably be staying on tiktok uh it's fairly easy to fairly easy to keep control of and right there's uh, i hate to get i hate to get it's a little bit political here but like with youtube there's a lot of like chances of you getting demonetized right and all that stuff. yeah right. yeah i don't, I, I don't want to be I, I want my own creative freedom to be on tiktok and if it's more up to the viewers opinion and discretion of whether my content is a big no-no or not sure yeah that's a very fair and respectable opinion i absolutely get that but uh, like it's it's not it's tiktok and creating content for me is a hobby right. i do not, i do not see it as a way to sustain myself right if right. there is ever the smallest chance that i get one million followers tomorrow then maybe i'll then most likely i'll start ditch like moving into other sites such as uh, like youtube and sure. everything like that sure. uh, outside of creating content i'm really looking forward to getting into oathbreaker that is something that i've uh, have a deck built for okay okay and there's a oathbreaker league at one of my local game stores that is starting up soon which is going to be interesting yeah but yeah that's that's kind of it with my plans that's awesome um so we all have things we want out of the game cards we want player you know creatures coming back what's what's a card that you want to see like what's specifically what's what's a commander you want to see is it truly the zubera support commander <laughs> let's be real I, here i was joking about zuberas <laughs> but the more i think about it the more awesome it sounds because <laughs> the there is only like seven Zubera in existence. But there's exactly seven Zubera in existence. Yeah. And um, like five of them are really cool. The other two are not that great. And, <laughs> um, Zubera support would be funny. But a commander that I'd really like to see um, be put into effect is... Uh, another like another shot at the transforming planeswalkers the ones that uh start off as a legendary and transform into a planeswalker that would be cool again yeah <laughs> just actually, like that would be really cool just like a magic origins 2 sort of scenario so we get to see yeah 
we we've dabbled in like the origin story of Vivian Reed, for example. Uh, we know her home plane was destroyed by Nicobolus, and she was created solely for the purpose as a revenge art for Nicobolus. Yeah, but um, yeah, we you could can, see. You can have Vivian if I can have Sarkon. Sure, sure. Tarkin, Tarkin would be amazing because you start off in Tarkir, and Tarkir is one of my favorite planes. So, <laughs> my favorite of all time. Mm. So, uh, there's there's also another concept of you get just like tra a transforming commander would be cool. Oh, totally. Yeah. Then yeah. um, the cool part is, is we might actually get to see that the way the story is looking. Like maybe we'll see some mm. re-sparked planeswalkers that maybe get to be legendary creatures and turn into planeswalkers. That would be cool. Mm. Um, yeah. So, um, Prof, you are at, you said at uh, Prof Plum, it's P-L-U-M-B-E. Yes, correct. At TikTok. Uh, any other socials you want to share at the time or not really? Uh, not really. Just you can find me at, at plum.exe on TikTok. I am still trying to get to 1,000 followers so I can do some live streams with you guys. Ooh, same. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the main goals right now. Um, so we can do live streams and do uh, spell table that way. And um, I can invite people to have a game with me, probably like play some like best of the three Swiss Pioneer if, sure. if that interests totally. you, Keith. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Um, I'm going to work towards getting cell spell tables set up as soon as work slows down and I actually have the time to do so. So right. I'll very much look forward to getting a game with you. That's uh, that's the yeah, I'm working on spell table as well. There's also you can also private message me uh, any deck list that you want to have a look at i'm on uh, blue collar commanders discord server so if you're on here please feel free to contact me about any of my content if you want me to highlight something within there by all means awesome as of excellent uh, mentioning that uh we'll do a shout out for our stuff as well um check us out on our discord if you want we'll give you a link in the comments uh you can find us at blue collar commander on tiktok and on youtube and currently, we're streaming on Twitch.tv at under under the name Enkidumash. That's E N K I D U M E S H. Uh, Keith, do you have any socials you want to shout out right now, or is that just the ones you want to shout out for now? My computer has been backburnered until work slows down. So hey. at the moment, that's a negative. Okay. Well, gang, this has been the Tiny Leaders podcast. We've had Professor Plum. Check him out on TikTok for real. He's a cool guy. And uh, and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for being our first guest, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'd like to guest again in the future. Oh, totally. uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more topics that we can discuss. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we haven't. Even, we've got touched on uh, Pioneer and Commando. We haven't even touched Standard properly or Modern yet. Oh, sure. So totally. it's it's going to be so fun. <laughs> Talk about how much I lament the state of Modern. It'll be great. <laughs> awesome and also how lord of the rings is basically modern horizons 2.5 let's right, go right exactly let's go <laughs> we're excited for that yeah. as well so yeah guys this has been uh the tiny leaders podcast thanks for watching and thanks for watching on twitch live to all you people 75 i see you out there and uh we will probably be back i'm hoping to do this at least monthly so yeah. i think i have another guest lined up uh, that'll be spoiled later though so, thanks for watching guys and peace out